<clears throat> Hello everybody, it's Laura Husband here from Hairdressers Journal International and we are streaming live across Hairdressers Journal and Professional Beauty this afternoon for our session on how to create a five-star customer service. And I'm here this afternoon with Nergish Wardia Austin, who is a business management trainer and consultant for hair salons and beauty salons and not forgetting barber shops as well. So she's in the best place to give us expert advice this afternoon. And she's also the CEO and founder of the Fab Service Stars. So Nergish, before we start, do you want to maybe just give us a few words on your backstory and your um your sort of why why you're so expert in this topic specifically on how to create a five star service within a salon environment? Right, so uh, hello everybody and hello Laura and of course Amika who's managing us backstage. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much everyone for joining. Um, basically uh, my background is that I am a hairdresser, colorist and a qualified beauty therapist. Um, so I've actually run some of the, the best and biggest salons across the world. I've also been involved in retail and uh, um, and only ever worked for the the really the best brands. So when I was running things here, it was at 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 Harrods. And uh, when I was working in retail in in North America, it was with a brand called Holt Renfrew, which is the Harrods of Canada. So I'm I come from a five star background and service, and so I I have that perspective at all times, and I've of course applied it to business throughout. So I hope that answers your question. Fantastic. Well, I guess, Nagish, we're, we're really thrilled to have you with us this afternoon. So thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule, which I know takes normally would take you all around the world. But at the moment, it takes you all around the world via the Zoom or Skype. It does indeed. Your usual. <laughs> thank um, you, Laura, for having me. We're, yeah, we're How here. can I help? <laughs> Brilliant. Well, shall we kind of maybe kick off with you explaining um, what a five star service is compared to a normal service that maybe isn't five star? Okay, so five star service is simply a way of saying um, we're giving you more. We're giving you more. So we do this, but we do it better than everyone else because we give you more. That's the concept behind uh, a five star service. So when you do something, you do it better than everyone else. That's really what it implies in the simplest terms. What is more important to understand is why one gives five star service. And that has to be, I, I would say for two, three reasons. One, it has to be because you expect that when you deliver to a higher than expected expectation, so the customer expects this and you come in and deliver this, that's five star service um, with bells and whistles. Um, the Burj Al Arab in, uh, in uh, Dubai has basically gone a little further and said seven star service. Mm -hmm. You know, I question it basically if you just keep throwing money at it, but it's not in order to bring your customers back, which is one of the reasons why you do it. You, you want to create long term loyalty. So if your five star service does not have the customer's needs uppermost in your mind, and when you create five star service, if you don't uh, explore what your customer wants and then deliver it, you're wasting your time. You're spending money for no reason. Um, if you're not making sure that the customer enjoys that five-star service so much that he or she comes back and is addicted to that and wants that a part of their routine, then again, you've wasted your time. And it should apply to everyone that frequents your business. And last but not least, um, you want them to spend more as a result. So it cannot be because it's just there for no reason, because then you've just got a lot of budget and really nothing particular. It's not well thought through. Let's put it that way. So when we in hairdressing, beauty, barbering, nails, when we do that, it has to be thought through one from the customer's point of view. Is this going to bring customers back more frequently? Is this going to keep them loyal to us and not explore anywhere else? And will they actually buy into some of this stuff? And will they actually buy more from us as a result of this service? So if it doesn't tick any of those boxes, you're wasting your budget. I think that's a great way to explain it there, Nergish. And um, the fact that you tapped into the customers and the clients there and the importance of their um, perceptions. So how, how do you think a customer or a client perceives a five-star service? 
So this is the point that I was going to make. Um, I recent, I can only give it to you in terminology that because I can't tell you what that five-star service has to be for each business, but I can tell you the thought process that is required to get there. And um, it was interesting that one of the, the, the um, it was a hairdressing salon owner that said to me, you know what? We've decided our customers love our coffee, but we were just going to make it you know, just much better. So we've got the best ever um, flavor of coffee from Colombia. We imported directly from Colombia. We've bought this fabulous 6,000 pounds Gajia machine and we're basically going to, uh, to do freshly ground and brewed coffee and this, that, the other. And I thought, how wonderful. And I said, and what have you done for the tea drinkers? And they just went dead quiet and thought, <laughs> actually, it's PG tips. <laughs> And I said, you know, whereas I love the sentiment, it has to make sense for everyone. Mm -hmm. So uh, it isn't five star if it just deals with a small section of your customers. It's that doesn't that doesn't make it five star. It just means you're paying a lot more for your coffee now. That's all it does. <laughs> That's what it does because it hasn't been thought through correctly. And so I need you to make sure that every customer's needs are met. So, you know, some people do, do it so well. There's a, a, a business owner in London that has decided his coffee and tea service was so wonderful that he decided to take a, a, a shop next door and turn it into a deli. And, you know, he's doing a superb business through it, but then he runs it like a deli as well. But that, that beautiful produce is being served in his salon. That's the correct way to do it because then there's a menu at our customers spending more while they're there. Of course they are because they're, they're having that product and they can see that it's available right there and therefore they're buying more. So it becomes five-star service, but it meets the end result that you want, which is, in this case, our customers buying more from you. So yes, the answer is yes. So that was just one example to give you. Um, so yes, it has to be based on what customers expect when they walk into your business, and but you deliver here. So then they perceive it as not just five-star service, but they think of it as value for money. So at a very fundamental level, if I had to explain it, years ago, 30 years ago when I ran, yes, I'm very old, everyone, stop laughing. But uh, 30 years that. ago when I ran Harrods, basically, uh, the, the, you know, the several um, uh, salons that were based at Harrods, uh, we used to have our coffees and teas served in a silver tray on bone china it was beautiful and uh that was five, considered five star service then uh, it's possibly considered five star because we had an actual kitchen and we had people preparing it and we had full waiter and waitress service that's what we believed should have happened with our consumers uh, that, that were coming to us. And that meant that when everyone else was charging, you know, seven pounds for a blow dry or whatever, we were charging 30, but it meant that we were delivering at a higher expectation. And uh, I don't know how to explain how people do their five star because I don't know where everyone's based, but I do know it starts with talking to your customers. And I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step guide later as to how to put something into place, but what to put into place, I can give you the thought process, but I can't tell you what will work for your business. Mm -hmm. And again, five-star service has to be unique to you. It, just do a couple of things so beautifully that you become known for it. Definitely. I think that's great advice now, Kish. And it was the example you gave was very interesting because I personally don't drink coffee. So I would be a great <laughs> example of someone who they could have the best coffee in the world. It wouldn't be would, five star to you. It would be five star to me. And there you have it. <laughs> exactly. So I guess that's um, that's a great point you were making there. And I guess um is it also about finding out your own demographic of the people that do live in your area, come to your salon, what they would like. So it's less difficult than that. I would say I would cheat basically because I'm slightly lazy in life. And so <laughs> I'd go straight in and go to your, call up your top 10 um, sort of best customers with the highest spend in your business. And always start your conversation there and say, mm -hmm. look, Mrs. Wilson, you come to me, uh, you're a very valued customer. Today, can I ask you a question? If I said money was no object and uh, I wanted you to tell me what would make um, 
your visit to us even better than it is now? What couple of things would you like us to improve? And so Mrs. Wilson would say something. And, you know, one of the steps that I will talk to you about is always make sure you're making notes. Because unless you have a record, or a, a record of the conversation is so important because at time of decision making, you need facts in front of you. You can't have these vague conversations with people and then think you're going to remember it all because you're not. She's going to give you two things and they could be mindlessly stupid things. So you ignore them, but you still have to write them down mm -hmm. because if three people tell you if giving them fishing hooks will make their lives better, then there's something, <laughs> there's something you have to think about. But if it's one random rant from someone, then it's, it's, but again, you have to write it down because when it comes to decision making, I almost want you to say, you know, out of the 10 people I asked or out of the 30 people that I asked, wow, 15 said the same thing without actually being approached at the same time. So that's something that they're thinking about. <clears throat> and it might vary. You know, you could have a, a holiday five star service at school holiday times, and it could involve something to do with children coming along with parents. And it's something that you only provide for the kids. And that could be, you know, a free haircut. If the mum's having cut and color at the same time, then a free child's trim. And of course, you train up your, your junior team to get that done, etc. And they'll be entertained with a video of their choice on your iPad. So mum gets that, that period of time. It's sort of like babysitting, but it's a service you're providing that she wouldn't get elsewhere. And I learned this lesson through a brand. I mean, I'll, I'll mention the name. It's a, I get my ideas from anywhere, really. Um, and it was a, um, a pizza brand in America. Brilliant. Chuck E. Cheese, please <laughs> forgive me, people. So <clears throat> and they decided many, many years ago, and I was quite a young person traveling through America, living in North America and stuff. And I, they did something very clever. They actually invited parents for a date night for pizza, but they could bring their kids. And the kids were thrown into a, a, a pen with balls and all kinds of entertainment while they had two waitresses just looking after the kids, while the parents were allowed to have a glass of wine at the barn. And, you know, they turned a really unpleasant experience because if anyone's been to Chuck E. Cheese, it's noisy and it's it's filled with kids and but they sort of almost divided it up and what we got um was i think it was genius for that brand to do what they did because they suddenly had parents coming for a date night <laughs> to a, a a place that one wouldn't dream of having no. a date. they were parents and they didn't most importantly they didn't have to spend on babysitting so they spent that money in the restaurant that's fantastic on a yeah. bottle of wine on a which is Exactly. Does that make sense? So yeah, it was unique 100%. in itself. Uh, it was clever. It was really clever what they did. So, uh, yes, I have been to a Chuck E. Cheese. I hold my... <laughs> No, Carry on. Move me out of I know, store. definitely. But I have to say that is that is a great insight there, Nergish, because obviously you can look for ideas outside of the hair and beauty industry. Always. And bring it into your salon to make you stand out from your competitors. Always. And also the, 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 the point is that Chuck E. Cheese was a lower end of a business. Mm -hmm. So five-star service can be delivered at any spend point. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Does that make sense? Yep. It doesn't have to be just at the five star end. Mm -hmm. It's five star for your business. Yep. No one else is doing it other than your business. And that's another interesting point. So five star service doesn't necessarily need to equal luxury as you might expect it to. And that's the false notion is that at a luxury end, it of course will be luxury. Mm -hmm. It will be about bone china and it will be about those things, but it doesn't always have to be that way. Mm -hmm. It has to be what your customer wants and what will encourage them to return, be loyal and spend more. Fantastic. We're starting to get um, some questions coming in from people, which is fantastic. And we've, got, we've got Chenda joining us from Bahrain. So thanks. Hello. <laughs> um, and we've also got um, Paul from Ireland. So yeah, very global. Audience. Hello, Paul. Um, oh, and Nicola as well. She hasn't told us where she's come from, though. So, Nicola, let us know where you're um, tuning in from. Is um, she from Chuck E. Cheese's head she office? Could well, she could <laughs> <have> Chuck e. <laughs> she's about to tell me off. Oh, well. 
Fantastic. Well, there is a slight theme starting to come through, and it's a topic we were going to tap into anyway, Nergish. Um, but obviously, we can't deny the fact that we are living through a pandemic at the moment and the challenges that come with that for offering a five star service. So, right. um, Paul has said, um, What's changed in customer service during COVID? And Nicola has gone on to say, Delivering a five star service while serving refreshments in a disposable cup at the moment. So, how can she up her game in other areas? Okay, so it's about, again, going back to my original point is what is going to bring people back? What is going to make them spend more, etc. So if your customer service, your five star service at, at this time, if I was running a business, my first port of call would be that my customer service and my five star customer service should encourage trust at all levels because a lot of my customers are staying away and uh, there's a reduction in the number of people visiting businesses is because of a lack of trust about the way COVID is being handled at the moment. That you cannot go away from. Yeah. So immediately your level of, of um, uh, hygiene levels have to be at the top end of the scale because the more you uh, raise how vigilant you are about your your hygiene standards and the more you publicize it on instagram and stuff i mean uh, uh, can i give a couple of examples uh, basically yeah, so course, many yeah. salons today are actually grabbing that and grasping that so well and thinking i'm going to make creative videos about how much we're making people sanitize their hands how much no one is allowed to walk around without a mask mm -hmm. you won't get anything in our business because literally you will have to sanitize to protect us and we will have to sanitize to protect you and that is our top priority and look how well we're doing it and here's what we're doing and these are disposable we're not touching and look at this fabulous sterilizer and you know uh look at what we've bought and all our brushes are basically sterilized and then wrapped up in film so we will only open them in front of you and we will only use them so now suddenly hygiene and five-star hygiene is today's priority definitely so forget the bone china that was lovely that's amazing but really what everyone wants to see is how hygienic is your because family. that's what today's time is look at how much it's changed for those of you who remember me and you don't have to be as old as me to remember this but a few years ago we used to spout this saying which was uh people are cash rich and time poor people are cash rich and time poor and we kept saying it uh as it turns around along comes covid and people are time rich and cash poor <laughs> so flipped it on its head Definitely. it's basically just done a 360 and given us a problem so now our five star service has to reflect that so now suddenly it isn't that people are, are, are time poor, people are bored out of their skulls <laughs> because they're on a treadmill. Definitely. So they'll spend any amount of time with you as long as it's luxury and perceived as it. Exactly, so that's the highlight of most people's months. Correct. And so now your five-star service looks different. And again, if I might touch on a subject, as much as we're talking about the co you know, COVID times and, and, and the, the, the pandemic, Again, something else that has been on a lot of our consumers' minds is how are we treating the environment? It mm -hmm. has become uh, an issue and I'm glad it has. I, I, I'm, you know, I'm one of these people that will do um, pretty much what I can not to actively damage the, the environment. Mm -hmm. So um, whereas I'm not an environmentalist per se, I will not deliberately and knowingly do anything that damages the environment. So um, we are very fortunate in my business of Fab Service Stars to have fabulous advisory board people that are experts in the area. And the, uh, the lady that supplies uh, easy dry towels, uh, Ann Butterly, has basically made sure that we talk about environmental standards. And why is that important to five star service? Because today, how you treat or what exits your building. So the waste that exits your building, the, the water that's going down your drains, etc. People want you to be careful about that. And therefore, you can turn those issues because a lot of people are bothered by it. And a lot of people are, are determined not to do further damage. And so that could be part of your five star offering.
that we really do consider it. And you know, uh, I can hold up anything you like, but here's just, just when you're applying for a fab service star, there's just sheets of things that you have to consider. So it's, it's that, turn that into a five-star practice. Mm -hmm. Turn those things because those are what people are looking for. And going forward, that's what kids are looking for. You know, at school has been telling them about environmental best practice. They're going to be your next customers. Mm -hmm. That's where your five-star service has to concentrate when we go out of this sort of period, whenever that is and uh, whenever that be. But that's the direction you ought to be heading in anyway right now. So that should feature in some way, shape or form in your in your five star service. And I guess um, no, I guess there are challenges, especially at the moment, with the the conflict between the hygiene issues yes. that have come along with the pandemic yes. and being as environmentally friendly as possible. Correct. So uh, basically, I, I can give you one example that's simple, where you have to do your best, but hygiene right now, right now, hygiene trumps the other. Yeah. So if you're if you're looking about priority and you're confused one trumps the other but again to serve in a styrofoam cup is probably not a good idea <laughs> it's going to kill a lot more things whereas you serve it in a paper cup yeah. don't serve it in a plastic cup and mm -hmm. try not to serve uber hot drinks but if you do then source the cups that you know the larger coffee chains use that are also paper but you know protect the customer's uh, well-being so there are ways to handle it and there is going to be an expense attached to it my, my thought process right at the start of the pandemic was that in order to deliver, deliver you a, a, a sort of a, a superior service and not drop our standards of five-star practices, there is going to be during this period while we use a lot more um, uh, protective gear, uh, we have to charge you a surcharge and that is separate to the bill. So that's your invoice for your services of waxing, et cetera, et cetera. By the way, there is a charge of X for the, the, the fact that we had to use more bedroll to cover all of the bed, the fact that we've had to use throwaway towels instead of this, there is a surcharge attached to it. And proportionately, you know, if someone's coming in for an eyebrow trim, uh, uh, an eyebrow shape, basically, uh, she does not pay the same surcharge as someone who spent an hour and a half having a facial or a, a body massage. Mm -hmm. So you price it accordingly and say the smaller services, there'll be a, a two pound charge. And for the larger services, there'll be a, a, a five pound charge or a seven pound charge. Does that make sense? Because that we're like using that. things. So again, that becomes you don't lower your five star rating and you don't lower your five star service. But at the same time, you've explained to them that this surcharge will disappear once we don't have to be uber protective of the things that we're doing. Uh, my, in my opinion, I'm telling you right now, halfway through this pandemic, I think we are better for it because our hygiene standards have gone up and woe betide anyone that thinks they're going to be able to drop their standards after COVID, they're not. Yeah. If there is a period after COVID, yeah. I think COVID will just be better managed. Mm -hmm. Like the, 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 the more infectious diseases are, are still better managed uh, because we found treatments for them and cures for them and or vaccines for them. For example, TB kills a lot more people, but we can live with it because we have treatments, et cetera. When COVID reaches that stage, where we have treatments for it in the hospitals, where we have managed it with vaccines, et cetera, et cetera, we will return to a normal, but our industry is not going backwards. Uh, the consumer will not allow it, nor should we. And that's a great message to get across then, now, because the standards have been raised from a hygiene point of view, haven't they? So in order to get any type of five-star service, now or in future you've got to keep those hygiene standards high and Absolutely. we've had um angela from malta we've got loads of people tuning in from different parts of the world Hello, angela. This afternoon, which is brilliant she says um she feels that her priority has been showing um ha her cautious customers the precautions and the hygiene standards um that they're taking for a set from a safety point of view and she's sending photos of the new reception area with automatic sanitizers images of the therapist wearing ppe and new procedures of the treatments, and they're loving it, and many of them are rebooking. So that shows the power of using marketing, doesn't it? It's also a five-star service. So I wanted to make a point here. 
So what would be a good five star service at a really um, at a really exceptional level would be to pick up the phone to your customers that haven't returned to your business mm -hmm. and say, uh, this is simply a courtesy call, Mrs. Wilson, we haven't seen you since COVID. And, you know, is there a, a reason for it? And are you worried about something that we're not doing? Would you mind terribly, Mrs. Wilson, if I sent you a short video, there'll just be a clip of, of uh, I'd like to walk you, Mrs. Wilson, through our salon, just to reassure you about what's changed. We miss you. We want you back in the salon and we just want to send you a little clip about what's changed and how we're handling things. So would you mind if I gave me your email or if I used your email address to, to send you that clip, please? And that is a level of five star service where you've assigned one person in the day in your salon that isn't particularly busy for two hours. And you see John in your salon doing nothing and you give John five customers to call up. And then John does a little video. And at the start of the video, you write down on the video, there's a little slide prepared specifically for Mrs. Wilson, specifically for Mrs. Jones, mm, specifically. Lovely, lovely. And it's such a lovely way to do it. And it's you know, neatly wrapped. It's the same video going out to them, but it's the, just at, as it opens up, it says, we miss you, Mrs. Jones. Just Aww. wanted you to see. see. So you're taking hygiene to a five-star service mm. level. And personalizing it, which is brilliant, because everyone wants to feel like they're your VIP, don't they? Fantastic. We've had another question come in, and this one is from Crystal, who's based in Cambridge, and she's a mobile stylist. And um, so she's asking the question, what can she do to take her service to a five star level during um, so time? This is a difficult one for me because I don't know what Crystal's practices are right now. Mm. So I don't know to what extent she carries equipment. So if she's a mobile hairdresser, I don't know if she's already telling customers to shampoo their hair or whether she's carrying some sort of mobile basin that can be attached. So, you know, there are those mobile uh, uh, sort of stands with a sort of a, almost a bucket that folds up and you can open it up and basically you use the lady's shower nozzle to basically wash her hair. So if she's doing that, that's fantastic. If she isn't, that might be something to invest in and say, you know, in the past I've asked you to wash your hair. That's not really a five-star service. Mm. I like to actually wash people people's hair and stuff so it's it depends on your starting point mm. to where you will end up delivering a five-star service for me a five-star service for a mobile hairdresser has to be that they have a consultation beforehand they talk through all the customers problems beforehand and then they basically carry the products she will need to buy them from her and that's her choice you're not shoveling them down her throat but because if you've asked listened and then solved that in itself is a five star service. And if you're doing that or not doing that, it's an incomplete service. So it can never be a five star service. And that's one of the things that I teach. I'm I'm I've irritated the industry with this type of conversation for years. <laughs> I'm I'm hated in numerous places for it. But uh, um, I just believe that incomplete service is it it's not even service, it's incomplete service. So you can't, it doesn't matter that you did it in a beautiful chair with a beautiful environment and a beautiful cup of coffee. If your customer is no wiser than when she came in to when she leaves, that is not five-star service. So I guess to, to wrap this bit up, your consultation, has to be five star. That is not an additional extra. That's your bloody job. Yeah. So five star consultations. And what I mean by that, they don't have to be lengthy or boring in any way. They don't have to be tick boxes. They're just ask, listen, solve. That's five star service to start with. And um, I can tell you it's still not happening in most places. It is not about the spend. It is about the delivery of the, the customer's needs being solved during that visit. You know, in, in, in bar, I can give you five-star service in barbering. I can give you five-star service. And it's just examples. With five-star service today, uh, you know, uh, my visits to uh, around the world, Turkey was the first place that I had spotted um, five-star service at very cheap prices. And it was a barbershop. Um, and my late husband basically wanted his hair clipper off again. And uh, uh, I basically just said, well, let's, we're in Turkey, just go to a Turkey. You know, there's a, a, there's a huge portion of barbering that is called 
Turkish barbering here in this country, but it's actually what happens in Turkey all the yeah. time. It's not <laughs> Turkish barbering, it's just the way they do it. Um, <laughs> correct. So, it, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so, uh, what made that special was the fact that he was given a little apple tea, but he was asked, is there a particular flavor of fruit that you like? And it wasn't particularly, it was just served in the, the, the little sort of Persian Turkish type of cups and stuff. And it was very simple. And he had a little cup of tea. But what happened at the end of that service was even without the customer bringing it to the barber's attention, it was not just the barbering that went on, which was what the customer expected. Mm -hmm. It went that step further, where the, the, the hairline, if it was low, it was clippered, but then there was also a little bit of wax on the table where they just waxed the neck off. So it was just clean. Mm -hmm. The line was clean. And then they waxed the, the edges of the ears. So any hairy ears were waxed off. And they just did it, uh, you know, they have this particular lighter fluid technique where they light the ears and burn the hair off and stuff. I, I know, it's a little bit. Uh, but fact is, the guys loved it because tourists used to flock to this. And I, it's only because they, the tourists expected a haircut and they got haircut plus all the irritating little hairs removed. That in itself is a five star service by a guy who's charging you seven pounds for a bloody haircut. Yeah, yeah. Five star service is about uh, just exceeding the expectation by a lot. And it varies according to the price point. Of course, you mentioned demographic, Laura, earlier. That's where demographic counts. That's where uh, you shouldn't be worried about anything you do. You do it really well. You make a curry for seven pounds or for 55 pounds in London for a portion. It still has to be a fantastic tasting curry. Definitely. Otherwise, it's not five stars. So <laughs> the product itself is not good. So, for example, if the waxing misses out patches on the knees while she's paid for a half leg wax, it doesn't matter how much the five star frills are there. The product itself has to be five star. And in our business, product is the service that we deliver. Yeah. So, in you know, in beauty, it could be a facial waxing order. So, let's take for example waxing right now, and we talk about it from a perspective. If the product and the basic level of service and the booking process, etc. If those aren't fluid, it doesn't matter how much money you spend trying to deliver this fakeness of five star. It's not gonna make up for the fact that at a fundamental level, your basics are not five star. No. That's... That goes without saying. Definitely. And you mentioned you touched on the um, the demographics and we actually had a question from Marta saying um, earlier in our conversation, we were talking about, um, you know, speaking to your clients and your customers, particularly the ones who spend the most money um, about what it is they would like to see to improve your service. But Marta has specifically asked the question, would you recommend doing a regular questionnaire for clients about the services you are offering? Uh, no, because you're not asking something that you're actually doing. So whereas a questionnaire is good to get feedback, here you're actually asking for ideas, Marta. So when you're asking for ideas, it has to be open-ended questions like, Mrs. Wilson, you're right here. Can I just borrow five minutes of your time? What if there was no budget involved? What could we do to make your visit a little better? And then just shut up and wait for the answer. Even if it takes a, a second, don't talk, don't speak at that stage. Let her think about it and come back with an answer. And that's the difference. That's why it can't be a tick box, ex uh, box exercise. And it has to be because it's the people that spend the most money in your salons, they recommend the most customers, et cetera, take their opinion because that opinion matters. And they will often be the most demanding customers. Uh, or shall we say in our terminology, the most irritating customers, <laughs> but they're not. They're your big spenders and you have to take into consideration what they want because they're speaking for, gener sorry, generally they're speaking for most of your customers. Brilliant. And Nicola has said um, she's finding this session brilliant. So thank you very much, Nergish. Thank you, Nicola. Um, she says she's about to have a catch up team meeting to make sure everyone is delivering a five star service. So this is giving her lots of ideas. So uh, let me come to staff and delivering a five star service for staff as well, because, you know, you don't want the, the loss of staff and you don't want the high turnover of staff and stuff. So right now during COVID, a nice little thing to do that would be five star service for your staff is find out which are the most nervous people coming in. So if, you know, if you've got Bob and Joe in your salon and Bob is okay about removing his mask and, you know, 
French kissing a cactus. Mm -hmm. That's fine, basically, because you know Bob's happy. He's fine. You leave yeah, him alone. That's a great Absolutely. image there. No, sorry, that's a great image. <laughs> I'm quite graphic, basically. I'm so sorry, and uh, but. Maybe Joe is protecting a mum that has maybe had a transplant at home or whatever. And so Joe is a lot more careful and cautious not to hurt her mum. So Joe needs to be a bit more serious about the way she is treated and that customers and the managers are holding it. So a good way to ask the staff would be, here's three categories from relaxed about COVID to slightly worried about COVID and really worried about COVID. How would you like to be treated in the salon? Ask your staff, what is important to you? Do you want me to be very strict when it's your customers? And do you want me to be ultra vigilant? It's not saying that you'll be less vigilant with Bob's customers, but you'll actually be le also more vigilant that Bob isn't just removing his mask when he's hanging around Joe, who's, you know, shielding for a, a, a mum. And so that's delivering five star service to your staff, having the respect to make sure that they're coming in but you're going to look after them and could that be also making space a space in the salon where they feel like they can go to and take their mask off for five minutes safely and then come back to their client it has to be yeah. uh, you're going to have to you know give joe a space to eat her lunch and maybe just say look we'll give you 15 minutes when no one comes in because she's mm. upset about opening her boxes or whatever yeah. but that's about delivering five-star service for your staff finding out how they feel about COVID and, and measuring their temperature about the worry about COVID. Does that make sense? Because you don't know what's happening in people's houses. You don't know whether they're protecting someone at home. You don't know if they're just absolutely ridiculously scared by it. You have to know this stuff to be a good leader. 100%. So that's five-star service example for your staff. Brilliant, hundred percent, Nergish. We are running out of time. So, do you want to maybe talk? I know we've got, to really talk. we've got to do the steps, Nergish. Yeah, do you want to talk us through your steps? So, basically, us? once once you've spoken to your your customers and found out what they want, because that has to be the starting point. Uh, otherwise, it's pointless. And of course, it meets when you decide. Does it meet the three criteria? Is introducing this and spending the money to introduce it going to bring customers back more often, going to bring them, uh, bring you long term loyalty from them, which means that you will do it better than anyone else. And that's why they'll recommend their friends, etc. and talk about it. Last but not least, is it going to encourage further spend in your business? Once it meets those criteria, pick a topic, one topic at a time and put it into place. I'm going to refer to some notes I made uh, because my memory is probably shot to hell. <laughs> <laughs> right. So uh, I would say start by speaking to your customers once you and write down any, any suggestion given by customers. Mm -hmm. So you'll have a list. Then speak to your team and ask them what's the best service you've ever had at a restaurant? What is service that you remember? Your teams will actually give you ideas about what has happened and how can you turn that into your business? How can you apply what happened to Bob when he was traveling Singapore Airlines to his holidays mm -hmm. and he had that bit of service? How can you turn it into a hairdressing or a beauty or a barbering service or a nails? And how can you apply that thought process? Because, you know, three, four people have mentioned it anyway. So between those lists, you will then see a pattern forming. Once you've got the pattern, you can select the one bit of service that you're going to improve because it can only start with one thing at a time. And then you can introduce the next and the next. You try to introduce three things, you'll never get it right to start with. And then you um, once you've decided you basically then say, okay, now we'll put these forms into a, a folder that says ideas for the five star ideas for the future. So don't lose that stuff. You've already done some of your research. You've probably got a second idea that's already ready to go. So don't throw all that hard work away. And then basically you, you design the idea or you book time. Look, there are reasons why there are experts in the industry. If you can't come up with the idea, pick up the phone and book some time with an expert. It'll be more than, and I'm not the only expert out there. There's hundreds of experts that are very good at their jobs. But book time with an expert if you're stuck. Generally speaking, if you've done what I've asked you to, you won't need the services of an expert. Then once you've written it out, you have to then role play it. So you decide how that's going to work with each person. And then you find a way that it is going to work for everyone. Now you write the step-by-step -step guide out as to how that's going to work for your business and what they have to say in case there's a higher charge and uh, in case there isn't, 
how do you introduce that new service in or that new practice in? And then you train it to your staff and then you get each person to role play it back so that that, isn't, that message is not being lost. Uh, you know, if you have to get a sentence in there for the receptionist to mention it, write it down for her, write down what she has to say over the phone and teach it to her to say it. Demonstrate what it looks like, you know, demonstrate it yourself in the morning to say, remember, this is what we're doing and saying with each customer. If we're doing this in the hairdressing uh, main hall, that's how we're doing it. In the beauty rooms, this is what it'll look like with a waxing customer. In the barbering chair, this is what it'll look like for you know, introducing the new, uh, you know, beard trimming service or whatever. So make sure that every person knows how it fits into their job profile. Then you have a little card reminder for each person, or you have a little sheet of paper that says it in the staff room, the step-by-step -step of how they should do it. For four weeks, that should be a topic of discussion and a reminder in the mornings, uh, during your briefings, during your meetings, whatever it is that you do, uh, that should be a reminder for four weeks because it takes four weeks to make habit. Once everyone's got it into habit and practice, then you will see that it generates the money. If it isn't generating one of the three basics that I told you about right at the start, is it bringing customers back? Is it bringing them back often? Is it uh, helping them to spend more money? You'll have to slowly peter it out because then it's just an expense and it's not delivering, which means it wasn't thought through correctly to start with. And you go back to the, the, the drawing board again. Uh, I would say, to, yeah. That's four, four weeks, did you say? So four you, weeks to make yeah. practice. So at the end you of the four weeks, People, it just becomes part of your routine. Yeah. They say that if you've never bitten your nails and you start biting your the same nail for four weeks, eventually you will bite it. By the way, it takes a lot longer to break out of a bad habit. <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, so unfortunately, but that's a good way to approach introduction of a five-star service. And that's how I would do it, basically. And it sticks then. Brilliant. Um, and I guess... We, as I say, we're getting to the end now, um, yes. now, Gish, so we should kind of wrap up. So I guess if there's anybody tuning in who wants to make those kind of initial first steps of thinking about, they've nailed the hygiene aspect now that um, salons have been open for a little while, but they want to think about how they can improve the service they open, offer their clients. Yeah. What, what's the next steps they could take even today, tomorrow, the next day for starting to implement that? Hygiene? It will have to be talking to their customers, their 10 highest spend customers. That has to be the place to start. There is no better place to start, in my opinion. Brilliant. And customers will give you the ideas. And then, of course, you follow the steps, as I said, talk to your staff. Talk, and, and, you know, visiting places that you admire. That's always a good place. You know, if there's a hotel particularly that you admire, go visit it. If there is a, um, you know, a competitor up the road that always gets written up for, then go and have your hair shampooed there. Go and have your legs waxed there. Find out what it is they're doing and how they're doing it. It's okay. It's okay to admire other people and it's okay to learn from other people. It's okay. Brilliant. Well, we've taken inspiration from Chuck E. Cheese during this session, haven't we? So it goes to show you can get... If I get remembered in this industry for just talking about Chuck, <laughs> I will not be best pleased. <laughs> <laughs> I have many such examples. I just wanted to use that one today. God. <laughs> well, just to take it to the slightly more luxury end, we've just had a message from Sarah Hemphill, who I think she says that you should know Sarah her. Sarah used well. to work with me at Harrods. She was, in fact, I think one of the, the best receptionists I think I've ever worked with. Oh, there we go. So she said, please do say hello to Nergish. Inspiring as always. So um, we've taken it. Hello, away. Sarah. And I i mean, I, I've got to say it's un, uh, unbelievable. So she knows all about five star service. <laughs> I have to tell you. 100 um, percent. And I guess the other thing we should really um, take from this session, which you have pointed out, Nergish, is the fact that the levels of hygiene and the expectations of clients is not going to change. It's not going anywhere. It's just going higher. And it's good for us. It's good for us. It was getting too. It was getting too relaxed, in my opinion. And uh, uh, I uh, believe me, that's one blessing that's come to us. But enough now, COVID. You've given us that blessing now. Get lost. 
<laughs> like, and the balancing acts between the importance of the environment for consumers as well. For sure. And yeah. that's not going away anytime soon because, you know, people are going to look for better products that don't hurt the environment. Again, rightfully so. We have a responsibility as people who do pollute in some way, shape or form because we do use chemicals. We don't do it deliberately. It's part of what we do. And so we have to take responsibility mm -hmm. for that and buy the best and basically but you know do do as little damage as possible brilliant fantastic i think that's um i think that's a fantastic way to end and actually we've just had um angels just said these new hygiene standards are here to stay yeah. um, and thank you very much that's been brilliant oh no thank, thank you, you so very much for much. sharing your Laura, it was lovely thank you and thank you for giving me this opportunity We've loved it, Nagish. And I know you said before, when we've spoken beforehand, that you wouldn't mind people getting in touch with you if they had any questions after. Is that still? Most definitely. Uh, and my... I've got your, I've got your, do you want me to go through your, um, the best ways to get through to you? So in, is Instagram a good, a good option? Instagram for you, is a good Nergish? place to go. I have... Two accounts in 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 most of them. One is Nergish Wadi Alston. One is Fab Service Stars. So, however they contact me, it's easy enough. Um, oh, yeah. I'm, I, like I said, I'm on Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, the usual places. You know, Facebook and Twitter. Brilliant. And yeah, you're more than happy, aren't you, for people to reach out and get in touch? So, which is uh, it's the only way it works basically in the industry. You don't know something, you pick up the phone and ask. Definitely. Oh, well, thank you so much, Nergish, for giving up your time to us and for helping those that have been tuning in watching live and i'm sure they'll be watching it back as well thank you so much and thank you hj and pro beauty for uh i guess giving me this opportunity i love the crossover by the way oh brilliant yes thank, thank you. you it makes sense doesn't it because it certainly does that, um a crossing pass on both the hair beauty and the barbering industries so um we want to bring the expertise to as many people as possible which is brilliant uh, I guess, Laura, thank you so much and for being a great host. And Ambika, thank you very much for all the tech support. Thank she, you very much. She hides in the background, but we do, we do. Um, very we great. do know she's there because yeah, she could exactly. easily give me a beard or a mustache. <laughs> she felt like it. Thank you, Ambika, for not doing that. Oh, brilliant. Thank Take you. Take care, guys. Thank Bye. you very much. Goodbye.